What's going on guys? Today we're going to be teaching you how to make this combination jaw jacker eye fish pro. We're going to call it the hillbilly hook setter. My name is Aaron. Welcome to North Prairie Life. Woo! So I'm not even close to the first person who had the idea to make something like this. I've actually spent a lot of time browsing through YouTube trying to find inspiration and different ideas to make my own version. So what I see all the time is one or the other, either a hook setter or a tip up variation. What I wanted was the option to do one or the other or both. So I'm going to show you how to make this thing. Okay, so on the table in front of me, I have everything you need to do this project, minus the chop saw, which is on the floor. Okay, first things first, we need a piece of wood. This is a brand new piece of wood. You do not have to have a brand new piece of wood. You can use something that you got going on lying around the side of your garage. This is just a, is a one by six, a one by six. The next thing you need is an inch and a quarter piece of PVC. Usually you got this thing lying around somewhere in your garage. Okay, besides that, we have a couple pliers, screwdriver, hammer, a small pole saw, and then, well, I've got my drill, and a small hole saw. Is that a hole saw? Hole drill, whatever it's called. Okay, as for supplies, um, I have small eyelet, we've got an American flag, little flag, two screws, I guess we can add this tiny, tiny drill bit to our tools, a mouse trap, a hanger, and a piece of sandpaper. Optional is a sweet blowtorch to make it look all fancy. Um, that's it, okay, so we can get started. Now, the rod I am going to be making this one for is this gigantic 42-inch monstrosity that is an awesome dead stick, not so much for in the house, but I think because it has such an awesome backbone and a really noodly tip, I'll be able to make this work for uh, the hook setter part where I could really drive the hook home but have a lot of play in that tip to keep a fish pinned. So this is what we're going to make it for. Um, why I'm talking about that right this second is because I have this big piece of wood in front of me and I needed to know roughly, you know, where I need to, uh, to cut this thing off at. So what I'm going to do is put the PVC at the very end. We just kind of look how this rod goes out to here. Now I'm just going to take the tip, bring the tip down to where I think it needs to be. So we're looking right around there. That's going to be my jam. So right at the end of where that tip is, I'm going to mark a line because how this thing works is the auto hook setter part goes off the end of the board and then the uh, iFish Pro tip up type style part portion of this is going to be farther in. So um, put it to the back, bend it all the way down to where you need, make a mark right at that place and then go chop it off of the chop saw. That's what I'm going to do right now. All right, got our board. Now it's time to measure out our PVC. So the first thing you gotta do is figure out what kind of angle you want on this thing. I want mine to be setting, I don't know, close to a 45 I'd imagine, because I do want there to be a pretty aggressive bend on the rod. So all I have to do here then is kind of take that off at a 45 degree angle. Do that with the little pull saw. Okay, 
Got that off. Give her a little test fit. Yeah, buddy. Looks pretty nice to me. So now we just got to come up. Well, however far you want this handle to be and then take a chop straight across it there. This next part is 100% not necessary, but I don't like the little color and all the writing on the edge of the PVC. So I'm just gonna take sandpaper after it. Okay, now I got a clean white piece of PVC. It's gonna sit pretty much exactly where I want it to there. So the next thing I do quickly is just take that sandpaper. I'm gonna knock down all the edges because I don't want any sharp edges on these. Okay, nice and smooth. Now for another act of completely unnecessary, I'm gonna grab the blowtorch and just hit this thing all because I like the way it looks. All right, it's pretty. Okay, so the next thing is going to be attaching the PVC to this board. What I like to do is just to use two decking screws. One goes from the side, one goes from straight down, pins it in from two different directions, and then I just wrap it up with electrical tape because, well, I would rather see electrical tape than see the screws. So. Just gonna take the drill bit, drill some pilot holes, get rocking. So while I got the drill bit on, I'm actually gonna go to the very end of the board, right in the dead center, about three quarters of an inch in. I'm just gonna drill maybe halfway through the depth of the board. Okay, I'll show you what that thing's for later. All right, so I want one hole right through the center here. One hole, well, so I'm just gonna put the one screw in first before I do the other one because I don't wanna hit the actual screw when I'm drilling through it. So we're gonna start by putting this guy in. And I just use a hand screwdriver because I don't wanna drive this thing through or split it. Okay. One screw is in. Now we're just gonna do a different one from the side. Okay, so we've got the one in there. Now I'm gonna put the other one in the side. Okay, those are in there now. Nice and tight. This thing is not going anywhere. Everything looks great. So now I'm just gonna hit the base of this thing with some electrical tape. Okay, and just to suck that electrical tape up, hit it from a distance with the torch. Real fast. Beautiful, okie dokie. Now we move on to the next part, and that's going to be making the automatic hook setter. So, we're gonna take our rod, put the rod in, and again, bring that sucker down, just like you want it to. So remember that's gonna come right to here, okay? A couple minutes ago, I drilled this tiny little hole, like I said, in the center, uh, about a half inch back. That is where we're gonna put our little, little eyelet. Just gonna put that down in there so it's nice and tight, but not like all the way because, well, it'd go through the board. That looks good. It's not going anywhere. Can you see it there? Beautiful. Okay, really good. Now, it is time to build the trigger mechanism, okay? And so what I'll do is I'm gonna actually pull it off of the other one we have over there so we can use that one as a guide. 
Okay, I'm going to bring this other camera in a little closer so we can see everything that's going on. All right, so now I got far one and close one. So, okay, here's the trigger, All right? So what this is, is just the bottom part of a close hanger. I'm going to show you how it all works. Okay, but right there, the eyelet up in the corner there, that goes through the very last um, eyelet of the, the rod. This thing over here is kind of the trigger mechanism that goes through the eyelet and then the line actually goes through this one here. Okay, so what we do, just gonna head and take this guy, take like a wire snips. We're just gonna clip a big straight piece off the bottom. Oh yeah, using the muscles. <clears throat> Perfect. So what I like to do then is I'll take this one and just kind of like slowly do to this what I did to that one, just kind of following it as I go. So we'll make the first little bend, okay? So we got the first little bend. We're actually gonna make that a little bit more. Good, so it comes back. Now about, let's say eh, two inches down, we're gonna do a full swing back the other way. So we're gonna take two of these bad boys. One holds it there, the other is gonna go here. We're gonna swing it back around. Cool. Looks pretty good. This one's a little longer, which is okay because this gigantic rod here takes a little bit more. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is a bit down the line. I'm going to curve it straight to, it would be the left, okay? I want everything to be sitting off to, if I'm looking down the board, off to the right. So when things fall, they all fall the same way. So I set them up all the same. So look again, got to make this thing search to here. Bring it just like this. And I'm going to do the same curve with this one. Okay, so I know it's tough because you don't have the guide, but for what I'm going to do here, I'm just gonna pinch that right where it needs to turn. Okay, and then turn it. Good. Okay, now finally, what I wanna do is make a little cradle. Okay, so at the end of this thing, I gotta keep doing this, sorry. At the end of this thing, there's a little nook there and that cradle is where the line goes through. So when the fish pulls down, it releases that trigger. So I'm kind of just gonna make a little V with this. We're gonna go down, give it somewhere to go, bring it over, bring it back up again. There is the cradle. Easy enough, easy enough. So now I'll take this, we're gonna just cut it off equal with the other side. And we have got a trigger, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll show you how I test this thing. So we have the hook setter. I'm gonna make this zoom down. Just for the sake of this. Okay, so again, notice how it's just in here. I'm gonna take this trigger mechanism, just kind of feed it through down here so she looks just like this. Okay, line is always gonna to go towards the cradle side. So it's just gonna sit there. I'm gonna drop this thing all the way down here, right? Remember, we gotta bring it all the way down and get it linked up. Okay, that's the start. And this is a little bit flimsier rod, so I might adjust that trigger just a little bit, okay? But then the line is going to go right through this little cradle here, right? Right through there. And now I'll bring this off the side. So when I pull this, that fish is gonna pull that down. Okay, notice how it's not really doing anything. This is at too steep of an angle. So take this out, bring it back. Take a pliers, 
lighten it up a little, okay? I know that you can use like a, a little plastic piece or something, and that plastic piece could go through the eyelet, but the more stuff I got going on, the more of a chance I think we can have something screw up. So if I screw up an eyelet, I'll just replace the eyelet. But until then, um, if you decide that's something you'd like to do, do it a little different, go right ahead. Okay, so we're gonna try that again. Remember, line and everything goes off to the left side. We're gonna bring the rod down, set the trigger. Perfect. Awesome, everything is set there. Great. Now the trigger is gonna go down the side through that little cradle, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna simulate kind of a fish bite. So I pull this down. Boom, there she goes. We got herself an auto hook setter. So one more time, bring the whole rod down. I keep everything off to the left. This rod's a little tougher than most because that end eyelet's really small but keep it over there. Good, so she's hooked on. Then line goes through the cradle. Perfect. Now fish does fish stuff. La da da, fish bites, releases. Auto set. Okay, so that is part one. So what I'll do after that, I'm just gonna take the little trigger mechanism set it off to the side. Now we're going to get everything set up and made for the iFish Pro type tip up situation. Okay, so what we do now, I got some weights on this line. I'm just gonna let them hang vertically. Okay, so while they're hanging, I can see whereabouts I need to, to drill out my hole. Okay, and so what I'll do is I'll just take a, whatever a screwdriver, go right where that line was at, Boom, I'm gonna make myself, a, make myself a little indention, okay? Okay, so we're just gonna cut one hole with that little, I don't know, hole bit, whatever it's called. Okay, move it off the table so you don't drill a hole through your table. Okay, there's your hole. Get your sawdust out of here. So, there you got a hole. Now, I'm gonna use this little pole saw again because I tried doing this before with a uh, sawzall and I messed everything up. So what I'm going to do is just, well, for this one, it's closer to the left side. So I'm just gonna cut a, a trench, kind of one on each side and then cut a small section out so we can get that line out pretty easy because this thing is pretty wide. Now we have a hole with a trench. So clear off the old workspace. And now it is sandpaper time. So you really wanna make sure you get all these edges and stuff nice and rounded off. Make sure there's no snags and things because, well, your line's gonna be rocking and rolling through there. All right, so just ran my finger through there to make sure there's no, no spots that are a little bit rough. My shirt is just super messed up. And now the places that I sanded don't look all pretty and burnt. So, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That's completely unnecessary. And you are get dang right. <laughs> okay, so now it's time for the flag tip up setup. So I've seen a lot of guys using these, like an actual mousetrap, and they put the whole mousetrap right on there. I don't like that, because I think it looks bad. So what I do is I kind of just steal a part. And the part that I steal is the little trigger mechanism right there. Just the, the actual trigger and the little nail that holds the trigger there. Or the little, I guess it'd be like a, a U staple. So this here 
This here is what I want. So I'm going to go just kind of right in front of the hole here, and I'm going to use pliers. I'm going to hold on to it here, and we're going to kind of put it right here, right in front of that hole. That trigger now is in there. I'm just going to show you what we got going on there. Right there. Okay. The next thing, I have got a door stop, like a little springy door stop. And then, because I'm a god dang American, I've got this little awesome American flag that I'm just going to poke the metal piece right through the door stop. Okay. Just like that. So now, what I like to do here is take my little flag, put it down to where it'd be like in the loaded position, okay? Take my little trigger here, fold the trigger over the flag, and then that'll help me figure out where I want to put the second piece which is going to be just uh, basically another staple that this thing can hook into. Okay, so here's just another piece I stole off of the mouse trap. It's just, uh, yeah, it's basically just a staple. Okay, so now we got the staple in, the little mouse trap part here in, and what I'm gonna do is actually bend the tip of this back so it just goes right underneath that little piece that we just made there. Okay, so now we've got the little trigger bent back. We've got the staple in place. And so we know right around where we need to put a little flag now. So we're just gonna line up the end of the flag here so it's underneath of the trigger. So the trigger's in there flag is doing flag things. Voila. Okay. Just want to make sure that this little end of this door stop is right where it needs to be. So I'll see where it is here. I'm going to use the screw and just mark a place right in front of it. Take this out. Now, the only way that you put these things in, it's super simple. You just have the little circle and a screw that comes with it. So I'm going to screw that right in that place, right in that little mark that I made. Okay, so that's in. Now I can just take the little door stoppy guy, screw that in, and you have got yourself a tiny little American flag tip up. Okay, so I'm just gonna bend it down, put it underneath of the trigger, put the trigger on, nice. There she is. Now, I'll show you a couple different ways to actually like run the line on this. So let's put this back where it is. iFish Pro style things are run with an open bail. So I'm gonna open the bail up. The trigger mechanism for just the, the tip up, I like to use these little iFish Pro things because they're very cheap. You can use them, they work super well. So I'm gonna go grab a bobber stop because I don't think there's a bobber stop on this thing. Now real quick, put a bobber stop on. Okay, and then the little eye fish pro guy. Put it through it. Got those old man eyes. Okay. So take the little eye fish pro tab, set it up just like you would with the real deal. So line goes through the circle there. Okay, flag comes down. Flag goes underneath the trigger. Little eye fish pro trigger guy goes right over the trigger as well. And then that goes over top of the flag and that flag thing just barely hooks on there. And you can always like change the sensitivity by how you bend that little, little piece there. So I've got the tag end down here. So just think about fish comes along, fish bites, fish puts the flag up. Okay. So now 
what I like to do is try to figure out the best way to do it all. To, because I'm not always going to want the jaw jacker thing to do its thing, but I don't see any real reason why I wouldn't want my flag to go up. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to put the trigger back in. I'm going to load the rod back up, put it on the trigger. Everything goes to the left because that's just how I do it. Okay, so rods on the trigger. Everything is set up that way. Now, what I want to do, and this is one that, I mean, guys, you don't have to do this, but I kind of like it just because, like, if I'm going to have this thing and I'm going to have the, the flag, like, why not make it work? So what I do is I take a little, just a little snap, and I just tie that little snap up with, like, a, a tag in, say, leave a foot. Okay. So then I take that little tag and I'm just going to put it around one of these eyelets somewhere where it's not going to get really in the way. Okay. So right here shouldn't get in the way at all. And then I'm going to make just a small loop on the end of this. Or a thing you can do is put another snap, but another snap is a little heavier. So it has a potential to get in the way a little bit more. Now guys, this is probably my, most unorganized and least favorite part of this setup right now, I'm going to be continuously trying to figure out a better way to do this because I just feel like there's a better way. I haven't figured it out yet, but when I do, you can bet I'm going to be making those changes. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this little small cord from the second eyelet down to the bottom of my trigger here. I'm going to use it just like that iFish Pro thing was. Okay, so we're gonna get everything kind of set up. There it is. Everything looks great. Okay, so now we're like double locked and loaded. The rod is bent, the rod is loaded. The trigger here is set up. The little mini trigger here is set up. And what should happen is, as I pull down on this one, it should release the jaw jacker part or the hook setter. And then that should release the flag and they should both go off at the same time. So, there she is. I like it. All right guys, there you have it. That is how you make the hook setter. So. Um, you can do it either way. You can either do only the hook setter, only the tip up style, or you can do them both. I haven't perfected the do them both one yet, guys. I mean, you can make it work. There's some rigging and everyone's going to be different. But uh, if I'm going to bring a tip up that I can use the fishing rod for or a jaw jacker, I want to be able to do them both at the same time. So. This is the rig. Guys, if you liked it, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Okay. Those things help us out. I appreciate every single one of those guys until next time. Keep living your North Prairie life.